Hey everyone, I'm Foligon, and in this video I'm going to show you how to prep a model in ZBrush for 3D print. Specifically, we are going to look at getting a full color print over to shapeways.com. In my cactus character here on screen, I have 13 different subtools and roughly 11 million polygons in total. He was a quick little project that I spent a few hours creating and he was sculpted with the intention of 3D printing. Again, in that material, the full color sandstone and at roughly two and a half inches tall. I'm going to go through this stuff pretty quickly, so if you have any questions about the process, please post them in the comments below. The first thing we're gonna need to do is merge all of our subtools together and make our mesh watertight. Then we're gonna have to merge all of that geometry together. There are a few steps to this process, but the two ways I will categorize them is through Dynamesh and Live Boolean. I have links down in the description to detailed tutorials on how to use both of those techniques, be sure to check them out if you have any questions. After you've successfully merged all of your geometry, you're going to make sure that your mesh is what is called watertight. That just essentially means that your mesh is solid, it doesn't have any holes, and we also want to avoid inner pieces, floating geometry, and any thin edges or, or similar problem areas. Now there are a lot of problems that can arise during this part of the process, and if you would like to see how I solve some of these issues in real time, I have a link down in the description to a recent live stream where I did just that. By the time you're finished, the inside of your 3D model should mirror the outside as if it is a shell, and if you're having trouble seeing those inner facing polygons, you can go into Tool, Display Properties down at the bottom, and turn on Double. If it looks like mine here, then your model is ready to go. Next up in the process is hollowing out our 3D model. First of all, this is absolutely not necessary for the process. The only reason that I'm doing it here is so that I can bring down the price of this print. Online print by demand services are going to be extremely expensive and the easiest way to bring that cost down is to use less material. There are a few ways you can go about hollowing out your model. For this print here, I duplicated, then deflated a secondary model to have a specific thickness of about three millimeters or roughly 0.12 inches, which is the thinnest you can have an unsupported piece for full color sandstone on Shapeways. After getting my deflated geometry to a specific thickness, I spent a little bit of time cleaning it up and getting it to a good place before using Live Boolean to remove the excess geometry. And remember there is a link to a Live Boolean tutorial in the description for you guys if you have any questions on that. Now one of the last things I'm going to do is decimate my mesh. If you don't know what that means, it's essentially just a way to reduce the poly count of your 3D mesh, your 3D model, without actually affecting the major primary forms. It's going to absolutely destroy your geometry though, which is totally fine for what we're doing here and you'll see here in just a second what I'm talking about. You can find all this under the Z plugin Decimation Master. We're going to use Preprocess Current, wait for that to finish calculating, and then decimate our mesh. I'm trying to get my 3D model under 1 million polygons or under 64 megabytes, which is the upload limit for Shapeways. After decimating, you'll notice that I lost all of my polypaint data. I can get that back by projecting the color, and you can find that under Tool, Subtool, Project. I did a little to clean up the projected poly paint, but after that, I'm pretty much ready to go from here. Now you could export this file as an OBJ or an STL or, or whatever you need from here to 3D print it, but you're not going to be able to get your poly paint or textures that you worked so hard to create if you use those formats. Luckily, we have a couple ways to get around that. Now you could use UVs to get a texture map for your 3D model if you need a higher resolution than you can get from your poly paint data. But for my purposes with this character, I can simply export it as is. In Z plugin, again, we're going to go into the 3D print hub this time, and I'm going to set my model to inches and manually set my size or use the update size ratios button to set it automatically. I'm going to copy my tool, paste it, click on delete other so it's the only subtool available. And finally, rotate my model 180 degrees along the X axis. Finally, the last step for all of this is to export as a VRML file. After you're all done there, head on over to shapeways.com and after creating an account, you can upload your model. Select your file, 
choose your units, and select your category. After clicking upload, it will take a little while depending on the size of your file. And then from there, Shapeways will automatically check for areas that will fail with all of its different types of materials that you can print with. Then it's simply iterating your model until you get it to a place where you can print it successfully. For my cactus, I've decided to have it available in full color sandstone, coated and uncoated, as well as their white strong flexible material. There is a link down in the description if you'd like to get your very own cactus for your desk. Go ahead and throw out that live succulent you've been holding on to and welcome in the new age of technology. No more are the days of watering your cactus once every week. That's a, that's a lot of time. Think of all the minutes, I guess, you'll be saving with this cute little guy. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you in this tutorial. If you enjoyed this, please share it with others. And I look forward to seeing you in a future video or live stream.